Welcome back to Hour 2 of Sound Space. I'm Zanak Zigian, your host and producer. This two-hour show every Sunday from 9 to 11. As we kick off the month of December, we are in the spotlight with classically trained guitarist Michelle Qureshi composer, multi-instrumentalist who combines acoustic and electronic textures to her ambient pieces. We're putting in the spotlight her latest two albums, Short Stories, which just came out this past August, and Silver Chord, which just dropped in early November. Welcome, Michelle Qureshi, to Sound Space. Hi, Zan. Thanks so much for inviting me to visit with you here and share some of my music. You know, Michelle, you aren't a stranger to the listeners here of Sound Space. Your album, Scattering Stars, when it was issued in 2016 by Heart Dance Records, your music came on my radar. I was really really blown away by that album. Oh, gosh, that was certainly my pleasure. It was my great uh, luck to get with Heart Dance uh, Records. Previous to that, I had six albums that just were there. There was like no means of knowing, you know, programs out there like yours. And so it's been a great connection for me. And it was a great way to meet you. (laughs) Wonderful. And, you know, at the time I started playing songs off that album for listeners here. I love your music as metaphor. That is the name of your recording studio, right, Michelle? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like a, a persona for me before I got my name itself out there. And it also remains my publishing company when I publish the music on my own outside of Heart Dance. You know, I was going to ask you, Michelle, before we got into hearing a sample off your August release, Short Stories, where we're going to be covering two albums. You're prolific, Michelle. We have to catch up with you now. (laughs) We're going to hear a couple of songs from Short Stories, and then we're going to hear a song from your newest release, Silver Chord. What do you think is the power of metaphor, Michelle? I, I kind of feel like every, you know, beyond just our words and, and our sounds, these are all larger symbols of things. And the way I host this sense of music as metaphor, it really is a reflection as music being so much a part of life and, and to the basic sense of the, you know, the vibrations around us, vibration itself is life. And so I'm always looking at, you know, what are metaphors? And you also know from like the titles of my uh songs and albums, how much I'm drawn to Sufi wisdom, the quotes of Hafez and and Rumi, kind of a broad view of things, the power of metaphor. So your album, Short Stories, it's a collection of these short, concise pieces. Your liner notes are they're whimsical, poetic, and powerful. And, uh, you know, just like actually a short story really is. I just wanted to ask ahead, is it harder to write the shorter song as opposed to the longer song? I think there can be a hard short song and a hard long. I really think it's difficult to compare the writing of them. And and for me, for example, you know, the because you asked on short stories, it really is conceived in that short way. So I don't really get to sit down and think about what would it be like if it was was really long. You know, on the other hand, I can. I've had some people say, oh, those are really sweet and nice. When are you going to, like, develop them into something longer? (laughs) Sometimes the point is missed, you know. Uh, Mm -hmm. I also love short stories. I I don't write them, but if I were to write, uh, that would be a form I would be drawn to because I love how concise and efficient yet, you know, still powerful and moving um, that that format is is capable of being. On the other hand, I could not uh, condense some of those really, really long pieces uh, that I do. Um, Like one of the singles I, I put out in the spring called Inside the Light Box is 12 Minutes. Michelle, I'm glad you brought that piece up because I played that piece on Sound Space, played it for our listeners. And that's the beauty of the two hours that I have here is that I get to play (laughs) some lengthy things as well, which we don't get Uh to hear all that often. Why don't we just jump in here, Michelle? I'm obviously, you you know, you are a composer, you're a multi-instrumentalist, and you combine like acoustic and electronic textures with the guitar. 
on your ambient pieces. I think that we should go to short stories. I would love for people to hear the song, My Sweet Goodbye. Michelle, would you give a short intro to this song for us? Sure, yeah. And can I just say, if you were going to ask me, I had just decided that that was what I was going to <laughs> ask you to play. And isn't that beautiful that that's what you asked me to play? How about <laughs> so, it? See, there's magic. Yeah, yeah. And it's all, yeah, it's magic. And, and also, it's, it's a powerful piece. I wrote it um, last year on November 20th and then titled it and kind of tucked it away, which, you know, I, I you think I'm prolific. I have three times as much music sitting around here that's not even published. <laughs> and then when I started working on this idea of short stories, the album, I found that piece and I was like, oh, my sweet goodbye. And then I looked at the date I wrote it. I knew I'd written it for my father, but I'd actually written it on his birthday. And it's still oh. more than, it's. it's been 28 years since he's been gone. And it's something, you know, that I've been, struggling with, you know, that you, you never um, get get used to that, but there are those times, those shifts in your heart when you can actually sweetly say goodbye and ha- see less of the, the mourning and more of the, of the life you live together. So that is, in essence, my sweet goodbye. And as you know, we're a week away from this anniversary, once again, of, of my father's birthday and the that I wrote this piece. Since we're pre-recording this interview, yes, uh, it is falling in that time zone. And uh, let's play around a little bit here. A great metaphor for the afterlife and eternity and what comes after all of this, right? I mean, the the power Mm -hmm. of that is at work at all times. And Michelle, I think your work really reflects that a lot. And it gives a Mm -hmm. lot of beautiful uh, space and and as well as beautiful professional technique uh, in order to absorb that. So let's hear my sweet goodbye, okay?
that digital drop came in my inbox from you right around the time I was coming back from Philadelphia. Listeners know this from my own father's death. And I would love to ask about this album. It says that you explored the colors, textures, and harmonics of steel and nylon string guitars. And at times you incorporate this alternate tuning and glass slide. And you use, of course, various capos too. Can you maybe talk a little bit about your process, Michelle, in those terms in the way that uh, we would just be able to relate to them when we're hearing this music? Sure, yes. The steel string guitar that I've been playing for the last about four years is it's kind of a new instrument to me because I trained uh, as a classical guitarist, which means nylon strings, a very different feel and a very different tone. Mm -hmm. Um, But there's this beautiful uh, body of work that has been created like a finger style guitar. So, you know, you're kind of, you're active with your right hand, not just a flat pick or something like that, which it can be great too. But this is flesh, your nail on the, on the steel strings and it vibrates in a different way than it does uh, on a nylon. So I've been kind of going through this exploration and then hearing the two instruments uh, together, how do they sound? And then adding something like, I love the glass slide across a, across a string, whether it's the nylon or steel, mm. you know, just fills in this, this warmth and you're kind of gliding across all these little micro notes that we don't stop often and hear, but they're, you know, we're, we're sending those vibrations out with that too. And in terms of the exploration and the sound, it's just so many different ways you can play on the neck, where you play. And when I put a capo on and I'm changing the, the length of the string, um, I'll use short capos. It's not just for people who might casually play. Most of them think a capo just means you're putting a bar that attaches to the neck across all the strings. But there's a lot of variations. There's short capos, you know, mm-hmm. uh, capos that have levers. So I can play um, maybe an open low string, but then when I hit the lever, I can add the fourth fret and have the other things capoed as well. This results in a lot of interesting and, and really neat sounds. And that's that's basically what I was exploring there, becoming more of a, a sculptor on my guitar than a painter, <laughs> oh. which is how I, I feel like a lot of the new age music I composed was, was painting. But this became very physical. You know, very much what you feel in, under your fingertips. Great. Well, the evolution of your work, right? It becomes, it, you embody it more, it, it sounds mm-hmm. like. Yeah. Yeah. So. And and the, the next song I'd like listeners to listen to uh, off the album, Short Stories, is County Line Road, Michelle. What technique did you employ on this song, if you'd say? Sure. Well, this has a, a short capo. It is an alternate tuning, and it uses, um, so there's a couple layers of of guitar, and one of the layers is slide. And it really just has a a real laid back, I don't know, the name just came to me as a perfect fit county line road. And in fact, you know, there was a nice time when growing up when we lived off of a county line road. And I think uh, uh, that's something everybody can relate to, a county line road, and the metaphor of being in between counties, in between things, you know in this space too. (laughs) Wonderful. I can surely relate to that. And and it is one of the reasons why I probably chose the song. I am a sucker for like road songs. Mm -hmm. This one, again, it it embodies the road. So let's take a listen to it. It's County Line Road off of Michelle Qureshi's album, Short Stories. Here we go.
Well, gosh, that was a really beautiful piece. That is the kind of song that makes me want to jump in the car and go hit the hit the road, Michelle. <laughs> That's great. That's exactly what I intended. <laughs> Good. Well, hey, you have a new album that just dropped in November. It's called Silver Chord, and I do want to uh, emphasize the play on the word chord. You have it as C-H-O-R-D, but there's also the silver chord, C-O-R-D. Yeah, definitely. And that's that's the play. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, we're going to hear a song from this album. You did do a little bit of collaboration on this album with David Helpling. How was that? Yeah, well, that was um, unexpected and, and fun and, and uh, I think a really great element to, to this album. So what it was is I, I met David for the first time in New Orleans uh, in May. The Zone Music Reporter show was uh, down there and I was mm-hmm. down there with a nomination for Seventh Wave. Uh, a lot of the people that, that I met down there are people that I knew on Facebook. So you kind of knew faces and you kind of didn't. Right. <laughs> so it was kind of a, a surreal kind of thing. But uh, he was a uh, super friendly and, you know, said, you know, anytime I want to follow up with him on anything. So um, I was got back and I was working on this and I I just thought, hey, what's your you know, how do you think this sounds? And he was uh, he's like, I really love this piece, but I would really love to collaborate with you on this and, and you know, shape it in, a, in his soundscape kind of way. So I was like, well. Of course, I'd love that. <laughs> I continued, you know, working on, on the rest of it and, and had a time with that. And we put it together and decided it should open the album because it's, it's, it's deep like the other pieces, but it's a lot more, let's say, cinematic and the dynamics are huge on it. And, yeah. and uh, then you go into the rest of the pieces that are very deep, but they're not going to, you know, kind of pop through the speakers in the same way that this one does. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's <laughs> maybe the ending one. We are talking about Silver Chord with Michelle Koreshi. Um, Michelle is a guitarist, producer, composer of ambient uh, music. We are going through a couple of recent albums, uh, Short Stories and Silver Chord, but we're on Silver Chord now, and we're talking about the uh, song that we're about to hear is a collaboration featuring David Helpling, and the song is called Voice Upstairs, Michelle Koreshi from her new album, Silver Chord. Here we go.
That was Voice Upstairs from Silver Chord. It's Michelle Qureshi's newest album release. And we have Michelle who took the time to call in and do a phone-in interview with us here for the Spotlight for Sound Space. Michelle, thanks again so much. And again, congratulations on these two albums. Sounds like a good reason to come visit sometime now. (laughs) Absolutely. Michelle, you have a standing invite to come to the station and studio with me when you come to this area. We thank you for making the world a better place with your music. And then how can people find your work? My website is simply my name, Michelle Qureshi, that's um, Q-U-R-E-S-H-I dot com. Um, And then, of course, on all the streaming platforms, you can search my name for Spotify, Pandora, iTunes, you name it. Uh, If you you have SiriusXM, some of my tunes are there, too. And the Heart Dance Curds um, website as well. Well, thanks, Michelle, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. You take care, okay? You take care, too. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. And that concludes the Spotlight for tonight. Hi, December.